Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we are in the Anchor Windlass Room. We're going to talk briefly about this equipment and uh, more importantly, talk more about the uh, electrohydraulic motors that show up around the ship. These uh, are pretty famous for being used in the gun turrets, but they're also used with the uh, capstans and uh, a couple of other places around the ship. And they're kind of different from motors that most people are familiar with. I am in no way an expert of these. This is just an introduction to the idea. Um, I'm not familiar with these from any use outside of battleships. I'm sure they are used in industrial settings, but uh, none that I've ever had experience with. Iowa-class battleships have a pair of 30,000 pound anchors at the bow. That's their whole uh, ground tackle system. Each anchor has approximately 1,100 feet of chain, and each link of the chain is about 123 pounds. So between the ground tackle and the chain, you're laying out enough weight to hold the ship to the seabed when she's moored out away from a pier. So raising and lowering that, you need equipment. And this equipment doesn't just operate the wildcats that are for raising the anchor chain. Next to the wildcats on the bow, there's also a pair of traditional capstans for adjusting mooring lines. And they're both connected to the same equipment down here. Um, they can run together. Usually, you only need one. You're either anchoring and raising a lowering anchor, or you're mooring and you're using the capstans to pull the ropes to pull the ship snug up against the pier. So up on deck, there are two wildcats next to each other and then two capstans outside of each other. Behind them, there are four wheels. And those wheels are married up down here. So you see that there's a shaft connecting the wheel up above us on the main deck to down here. So we can turn it from either down here, somebody gives us an order by sound powered phone or something, or they can turn it up there. It's mechanically linked, all analog, uh, no issues there. Uh, so this wheel is for raising and lowering. Turn it one way, it raises, you turn it the other way, it lowers. The larger wheel over here controls the speed at which it's going up and down. So it's the brake, you can tighten it to uh, stop or loosen it and it allows it to go faster. Why is there something separate controlling what direction you're going and uh, what speed you're going? It, I feel like it would be relatively easy to just, the more you open it towards one direction, uh, the faster it goes in that direction. Well, that ties back into this type of electrohydraulic motor. So, um, the motor has two parts, an A end, which is this part here, and a B end, which is that part back there. Uh, and this is more or less the electric part. The electric motor is that big round thing over there. And that is uh, basically acting as a pump to move hydraulic fluid. And you notice all these copper pipes here. Oftentimes on Iowa-class battleships in particular, uh, the hydraulic fluid's going through copper pipes, not uh, iron pipes or steel pipes. So this is sending all of this over to the B end. There is a reservoir below us that is the tank for hydraulic fluid. And there is an expansion tank above us for if this stuff gets warmed up and it needs somewhere to expand to, it goes up into that tank. And you can see there's a sight glass there so you can see how full it is. This is sending the fluid the hydraulic fluid over here at a constant pressure. All right, so you can see the shaft going up to the wildcat above us, and over there you can see a shaft going up to the capstan. This mechanism here, we can lock one or the other out. Normally they, they'd both be spinning, but hey, we don't want to raise the anchor chains uh, when the anchors are already all the way up and we're trying to pull the ship in, so we can uh, basically use this like a jacking gear and disengage it. Uh, I have not seen anything similar for the capstans, so I think if the system is running, those are just always spinning. 
and you can engage or disengage the wildcats for the anchor chains as needed. So going back to this, this is sending fluid in at a constant pressure. Uh, it would require a lot of startup power if every time we changed direction um, we have to turn on the motor to rotate it one way or the other. Maybe this isn't such an issue with the anchor chains here, but with the gun turrets that are more or less constantly in naval battles turning to stay pointed at the target, um, it just doesn't make sense to keep shooting massive amounts of energy. The one that rotates the turret, the um, motor for that, is 300 horsepower. A gun turret requires 1,800 amps. So on shore power, we're only getting 1,200 amps to power the entire ship. Uh, so a single gun turret requires more power than every lighting system and uh, other critical systems like that on the entire ship, our air conditioning, everything. So it was not practical to have to have an engine or a motor that you need to shoot massive amounts of electrical power and to get it to start turning on. So you just constantly have it running. The problem is if it's constantly running, you would think it constantly wants to rotate and that's an issue. So that motor is just moving the hydraulic fluid against the B end of the system. Now, there is a plate in the B end and if the hydraulic fluid is just running at the uh, constant pressure, no problem. Uh, nothing actually happens. It doesn't do anything special at this end. However, when one of your control surfaces turns a wheel, it's going to tilt that plate one way or the other, which is going to make more or less pressure, which is then going to turn or cause the B end to turn one way or the other, depending on which way that plate has been tilted. So the motor's constantly running, and then when you tilt that plate, it tells it to basically kick in and turn the system. So you don't have that massive requirement for startup energy every time you want to turn. So long and short of it, that's what's going on here. You can turn this either way, and then it's a separate system then to brake and control the speed. All right, so that out of the way, a couple more uh, things to point out in this space that you've probably noticed in the video. First off, we've got shoring timber here. The Navy left the original stuff all over the ship. So this is uh, some of our damage control equipment that is used, we're pretty near the bow of the ship. Uh, Iowa-class battleships are pretty large and have been known to run into other things on occasion. So. Um, up here is pretty thin stuff. It's designed to just crumple or break away. So let's say that this bulkhead right in front of us becomes the new bow of the ship because we've just uh, rammed into something. That bulkhead's not designed to do that, and if we're going at speed, that's going to be a lot of pressure against that bulkhead. So you can shore it using the timbers like these, basically wedging uh, against the bulkhead and to other structures around the space to keep that secure. Uh, likewise, we take a shell hit and it blows a hole in the deck or something. Well, we can put a plate up there temporarily. Remember, this is damage control. It's not permanent repair. Uh, we can hold a plate or something up there uh, to make the space quasi-watertight again but we need something to wedge it into place. And so there's shoring timbers like this all over the place. There's usually a shoring kit or chest nearby that's gonna have carpentry cross cut saws, a bunch of hand tools, stuff that doesn't need power, uh, plugs, things like that, so that you can cut this to size, uh, big nails and mauls so you can hammer it in place and, and wedge it and hold it secure until you get out of uh, that situation that required damage control and you can effect permanent repairs. This is one of the chain pipes. So the anchor chain comes from the bow, runs back around the capstan, and then comes down here, goes all the way down this trunk several stories 
to the chain locker. First off, let me apologize for the uh, sound and lighting conditions in here. We're in a three-story tall metal box, um, and there is no light in here as designed and built. Anyway, here you can see the anchor chain come out of the chain pipe above. Uh, and if you turn around down there, you can see how deep the room continues to go. And if you look at the bulkhead, you'll see they're all pitted and dented up from getting hit with real big anchor chain, believe it or not. And the chain locker is just where that stuff ends up being coiled up at the bottom. So each link of anchor chain here weighs 123 pounds. Think you can lift one up? Let us know in the comment section down below. Usually it's always leg day on the battleship from all the walking around and all the flights of stairs, but today we're working on our arms. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. We really appreciate the support that viewers like you have given us. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue supporting the museum and our channel. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us. Thanks for watching.